Jean Shepard, you've been uncharacteristically quiet today. <laughs> Bill's been talking to her. <laughs> Bill's been bending Bill Carlisle's been bending her ear all day. <laughs> Bill's my buddy. I got to, everybody's been telling stories. I got to tell this, and about 90% of the story is true. It, it, it has happened to me. You know, you talk about... Unlike some of the rest. <laughs> you talk about getting to go to uh, church every Sunday and Wednesday like we do now. We got to go once a month. That's when the traveling preacher come through. He preached at the schoolhouse. And my mother would get us in there, and she'd sock us down these big number three wash tubs. Do y'all know what lye soap is? <laughs> it will cure leprosy. <laughs> she would scrub us till the hide come off. About three days later, she'd do it again. And we'd go down to the, to the um, schoolhouse to hear this preacher. She would dress us up in our finery. I'm telling you. We, we dressed. We really got dressed. It was shirts for the boys and dresses and bloomers for the girls made out of Purina feed sacks. I used to think that Purina was the largest clothing manufacturer in the world. <laughs> it was wrote right across my drawers back there. Purina. <laughs> That's the only thing that lye soap wouldn't take out. That's right. This wonderful man would come in to preach, and I can remember his name. We loved him. He had a very common name, Brother Richard Smith. And we truly, truly loved this man. But he had a tendency, really, every once in a while he would um, he'd nip a little bit. Actually, he'd get drunk. But that didn't matter. We loved him, and the Lord loved him and understood him, so that's what was important. We had the Lord's Supper one night. And as he was leaving the schoolhouse in his old car, he got to weave in a little bit, and the sheriff was behind him. And the sheriff pulled, it, pulled him over, and he walked up there, and he said, Brother Smith said, you been drinking? Brother Smith said, no, no, no. <laughs> he looked in the back seat, and he saw them bottles back there. He said, Brother Smith, what's in them bottles? He said, it's just water, Sheriff. Well, the sheriff grabbed one of them bottles and uncorked it and smelled of it. He said, Brother Smith, that's wine in them bottles. Brother Smith said, oh, hallelujah, he's done it again. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, but he was a wonderful man. He really was. And we loved him. We truly loved him. Sing us a song. If I can get through it with my sinuses, everybody should know this one. James. What? Oh, what, 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 what? No, no. me, me, me. <laughs> I'm telling it. What, what a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in
to the Lord in prayer. You know something, Jane? That song we were talking about in Northern Ireland, that was written by a fellow named Joseph Scriven yes. from Northern Ireland. And when he was a young man, he was engaged to be married. And the young lady that he was supposed to marry the next day was out horseback riding and fell off her horse in a stream, hit her head on a stone and drowned. And Joseph Scriven was so torn up uh, about the loss of his sweetheart, he couldn't bear to see the hills, the green hills of Ireland anymore. And he took a boat to Canada, a place called Port Hope, and dedicated his life to working with poor children, teaching school, and uh, helping them. He became known as the Great Samaritan of Port Hope. And late in his life, a newspaper reporter came to talk to him about his uh, time there as the, the, Samarit, the Good Samaritan of Port Hope, Ontario. And he was looking through his scrapbook, and the newspaper reporter came across this little poem. And said, so, what's that? And Joseph Scriven said, oh, that's just something I wrote for my mother. I heard she was very ill and she was about to die in Northern Ireland. I knew I couldn't afford to go home to be with her. So I, I wrote this poem for her and sent it to her and hoped it would get to her in time before she passed away. And uh, the newspaper reporter said, well, could I publish it in the paper? He said, oh, nobody want to read that. It's just a personal poem for my mother. It was published in the Port Hope newspaper. And somehow it fell into the hands of Charles Converse, the great hymn writer who put a melody to it, and it became one of the world's favorite hymns, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Beautiful song. Great story. I'm going to tell you something. I love to hear him talk and tell those things like that. I but I'm going to tell you something. If you go over to Europe, and especially in England, you've got to get him on the show with you. Because I, I traveled over there with him one time, and he's the most interesting man. And I tease him about this, but he really is takes you around to all those places and tells you about all of them, and it makes it so much, that ain't funny, but it's interesting. Tinky says I missed my call and I should have been a sightseeing guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Tinky don't want you at home that much. <laughs> well said. Shame, shame on you, Stu, you started to say something. Well, when Jean was telling that little story about her preacher and the, uh, and the jugs on the back seat, it reminds me of a variation of a story that, that I heard. It's about a little three or four nuns that were riding along in their car, and they were way out in the boonies somewhere, you know, Las Vegas type of country, and they ran out of gas. And they had to walk to the service station, but they didn't have anything to carry the gas in except the bedpan. <laughs> so they carried the bedpan to the service station and came back, opened the gas tank, and started pouring the gas in, truck driver went by and he says, now that's faith, I want to tell you. <laughs> Stonewall, ever since we got on early here today, you've been pretty quiet. Oh, all this time. I've just, I'll tell you what, I get hoarse on these things, but it's not from the singing. I love to sing. It's all that laughing, man. <laughs> hey, that'll wear you out. <laughs> You singing some bass over there. I've been here. I get you. horse help and sing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. I never sang no bass. Just, my voice has just got a little bit low and whatever, you know, just <laughs> whatever you can do, you know. Well, it sounds uh, good. How about giving us a song? I got an old song that we do for you. This goes way on back. We used to uh, work a little bit in the churches back. Uh, my grandmother used to take me to church a lot. And she believed in being there every time the doors open, you know. And so I got to sing with this little neighbor boy, and we sing songs like this. So I've got this in the album, and uh, it's called uh, Kneel at the Cross. I'm just going to let the boys kick it off. Kind of up, fellas. Kneel at the cross, then when we meet you there. Come while he waits for you Listen to his voice Leave with him your care And begin life anew Kneel at the cross Oh, 
There is room for all Oh, would His glory share A bliss there away Harm can never be fallen Those who are anchored there Give your idols up, turn unto them above. Turn not away to life's sparkling cup, trust only in his love. That's ordinarily an old knee slapper, but that's a good tempo, too. It's a great song. <laughs> Billy Walker, I look around the room, and I think you're the only one that hadn't done a solo today. Well, let's remedy that. Yeah. <laughs> I bet we could. We can get a microphone. We're going to get a microphone out here because I'm going to stand up. Okay. Yeah, I've been sitting down all day. <laughs> you need it. So have I. <laughs> that's great. Put this one over here so I can hear my guitar. Guitar. Do you have a guitar to match every shirt you've got? Well, not every shirt, but I do have a few guitars. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty good. The yeah. matching shirt and the guitar. Uh, you know the uh, the pattern and the theme of our show today has been what we believe as Christians and how God has touched our lives. All of us have had a time where. We've not really lived for the Lord. And God, with his infinite mercy, has decided that he wants you. And so he causes things to come into your life that brings us back to him. And uh, because without Jesus Christ, there is no use living. And uh, I want to do a little song here that uh, we can leave the folks with here on this particular program called where could I go but to the Lord because you can't go anywhere else except to Jesus living below in this old sinful world hardly a comfort can afford Striving alone to face temptation so Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul Life here is 
scrap with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? One of the greatest gospel songwriters that ever lived was the Reverend Thomas A. Dorsey. He wrote the song that Margot is going to sing. Charlie Leuven said he had a story about uh, yes, Dr. In 19, Dorsey. Uh, early 1979, uh, my wife Betty started bugging me about that we should go to the, uh, the uh, Hall of Fame, the Songwriters Hall of Fame show. And I said, I just don't want to go. And uh, she worked on me for two months there. And finally she said, well, I didn't, I wasn't supposed to tell you this, but they want you to present Ed Bruce the award because he's going into the, the Writers Hall of Fame. So I, Ed's a dear friend of mine. I said, okay, I'll go. So I got there and uh, I could tell by the music and everything that it wasn't Ed Bruce, it was the Leuven Brothers. And she tricked me into that. <laughs> But I, uh, I really enjoyed the evening because I got to meet this man. He, his name was Thomas A. Darcy. He's a preacher. I know he was in his earlier days. And he told me the story why he wrote this song that uh, Miss Margot is fixing to sing. He was preaching. Uh, they lived in Memphis. And he was preaching in St. Louis. And in the middle of his sermon, and when he left, of course, when he left home, his wife was... Uh, way into her pregnancy, just any time. And in the middle of his sermon, someone handed him a note that his, uh, that his wife had had the child. They saved the child, but lost the mama. And uh, he wrote this song on the way back home to Memphis. Wow. A very humble man. Mm. Margo, I don't think we can have a better introduction to the song than that. Would you sing it for I us? I don't either. I think it's wonderful. Never sung this before, my first precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, cause I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm. Precious Lord, lead me home. When my way groweth dear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. You know, come on. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Help me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm. 
beautiful everybody's applauding at the end of the songs do they applaud in the churches y'all go to oh, yeah. That, yeah but you know there are some churches where I think the people don't feel like they can applaud I think it's wonderful to to applaud the beautiful exactly yeah. and Bill I went to a church the first church that my daughter and I ever sang at it was a little church in Virginia and the preacher came up and he said I liked what you sang, but how come you didn't yodel? And I said, oh, sir, I didn't think I should yodel in God, God's house. He said, why not? It's a gift, and you ought to use it. Uh -huh. There you and go. And I did. You know, you know, I've got to tell you that the, the Episcopal Church is a formal church, and we don't applaud. But on occasion, I'll have um, some friends of mine from the opera and country singers and that come in and do a concert. And I always tell the folks, now, look, if you don't applaud, they're going to think you don't like them or something's wrong, you know. Yeah. And so they always do. And, and I think it's wonderful when people applaud. Uh, Leroy Van Dyke, you've been quiet today. I've been very quiet because I'm enjoying what everybody else has to say. Um, a lot's been said about the Ozark Jubilee, uh, later on known as Country Music USA, and also Jubilee USA, under the tutorage of the great Red Foley. And there are quite a few graduates of that school here today. You've Billy Walker and the Browns and Bobby Lord and Wanda Jackson and I don't know how many more and well yes and of course Gene Shepard and I think everyone in this room who was in the business at the time that show was on the air for that five years made an appearance or two on that show but for those of us who were regulars on the show um, it was very important to us because it came early in our careers and we uh, needed that network television exposure to do what we did. And the second thing that was important, of course, was that there was no such thing as videotape back then. If we made a mistake, that's the way everybody in the world saw it. So we had to learn to do it the right way first. So it was very important there. But I think the most important thing was to study a man that I think was one of the greatest stylists of all time. It's already been mentioned. And as Bobby said, a great stylist in country music in general, but particularly in the gospel songs. And, and it was a great privilege to have been able to study the great Red Foley at close range. And uh, I, I recorded some of his songs. It's almost impossible to do one of his songs without remembering Red Foley sitting on stage and doing that song and saying, good night, mama, good night, papa. I'd like to do one of his songs. If when you give the best of 
of your service Telling the world That the Savior has come Be not dismayed If they don't believe you He'll understand And say Well done When I come To the end of my journey Weary of life And the battle is won Carrying the staff And the cross of redemption He'll understand And say well done Understood the Savior of all sinners hung on the cross, he was God's only Son. Oh, hear him call his Father up in the heaven. Let not my will but thine be done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life and the battle is won. Carrying the staff and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say, Well done. He'll understand and say, Well done. Bill, I think I think one reason that everybody's enjoying this today, I don't know about the folks at home, and I think they will, but the folks here, I can look around this room and I can see lifetime friendships. Bobby, Bobby and Leroy forever, I, just forever, all these people have been great friends. And I think it's showing in today's work. I just love it myself. And I'm going to give everybody a special <laughs> hand. We're going to give you one gift. I found out something interesting from my buddy Eddie Stubbs. I know everybody in this room knows Eddie. He's a walking encyclopedia of country music and one of our great announcers at the Opry. I was talking to him about our show today, and I mentioned to him the song I was going to sing, and he flipped through some pages of something and told me that it was 50 years ago this week that Kitty Wells recorded this very song. 1949, and Johnny, you were telling me that this record was recorded in a hotel in Atlanta. In Atlanta, in Atlanta Georgia, yeah, in the, I forget, Fox, Fox Hotel or something down there. But Jack and I went down 1948, and we did uh, eight sides, and Kitty did four gospel songs, and she did better than we did. <laughs> Why would you record them in a hotel in Atlanta? Did they just not have studios in those days? Or? They didn't have studios in Nashville, and uh, they brought the equipment from uh, New York City and set up in the hotel. Steve Scholes was the A and R man. He was up in the uh, floor above us, and they run the microphones, uh, put them downstairs in the room right underneath him, and they had a red light to come on. When we'd start singing, we could hear him. We said, when the light comes on, start singing. And wow. One microphone. one microphone. So we all had to work through that one mic. Can you imagine her making records that young? She was real young. Yeah. She must have been six or seven years old anyway. <laughs> now 
Now will you cook supper? <laughs> <laughs> you better, Johnny Kitty. says, now will you Kitty, cook you supper? Kitty, you better cook supper because I'm not. She, I, I, I kid her all the time about cooking supper. So I said, well, how about cooking? I think you ought to cook me some supper tonight. She said, I think you better think again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kitty, I hope you don't mind me trying to do this song. You certainly put your mark on this song years ago, but uh, you chose another one, so I chose this one. I hope everybody knows the words on the chorus, and you all join in and sing along. It's an old-timer called Gathering Flowers for the Master's Bouquet. Death is an angel sent down from above. Sent for the buds and the flowers we love Truly it is so far in heaven's own way Each soul is a flower in the master's bouquet Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet Beautiful flowers that will never decay Gathered by angels and carried away Transplanted to bloom in the master's bouquet Loved ones are passing each day and each hour Passing away like the life of a flower But every bud and each blossom someday Will bloom as a flower in the master's bouquet Gathering flowers for the master's bouquet Beautiful flowers that will never decay Gathered by angels and carried away Transplanted to bloom in the master's bouquet Forever to bloom in the master's bouquet Some of the members of our crew, our, our camera people, young people that are working here, made the comment that they're Christians, that they know a lot about the Lord, they go to church, but somebody said they had never heard any of these old songs that we're singing. And I guess my question is, are these songs going to die? Are, are they, what, what's going to keep them alive? It's what we're doing today. Huh? Well, I sure hope so, because I would hate to think... Parallel with the uh, modern and our kind of country. It's parallel. It's going to get... Say it's parallel with, the, with country music. I call, I call it hardcore country Christian. What we're doing today. Yeah. Hardcore country Christian. But I would hate to think that there will come a time they when people will. won't sing these old songs. They'll always sing these songs. You know, they, they, they say that the wheel always goes around, that history repeats itself. So these songs will always be around. They'll come back. They, they, they can't die. They're too great. The stories are too, too good, and the melodies are too good, too strong. Hey, Bill, a lot of these songs, I think, are, are not in the church hymnals, like the Baptist, Methodist Church, and most churches sing out of their hymn books. Now, a lot of these songs, like Albert Brumley's songs, uh, he had some that are in the hymns, but they aren't all in there. So these were songs that were done on radio and records, and like you say, 100 years from now, they may not... Be as popular as Have y'all been to the churches where they will put the words to the songs up, shine them in the, yeah. up on the, the wall, and people can, can sing along with, those, the, with those that? Those are called choruses. Wanda, what now? They're called choruses, and uh, I know because our, our church in Oklahoma City uses a lot of the choruses, and uh, they're fine. You know, the young people, I believe they do need their own music, but they can't let these great songs that we're singing die. I don't really know who's going to keep them alive. There's going to be a generation that's... I, I, don't think, I don't think God will let them die. I'll be honest with you. That, that's the truth. You know. wow. We praise and glorify Him. That's what we're supposed to do. And He won't let them die. I want to say something. When you... yeah. I'm going to be 
Well, I have a hundred years. The sixth chapter of Haggai tells you that <clears throat> in the last days they will search to and fro and cannot find the word. So it's coming. The Lord says, I direct men's steps. He's in charge. Praise the Lord. Charlie, would you start to sing? I was uh, on my way into Nashville last Saturday night, and I heard Porter Wagner sing uh, Rock of Ages. And uh, Nora Lee, uh, Dwayne's uh, wife, uh, was off. I, maybe she went to Vegas with the uh, Oak Ridge Boys, but uh, Jennifer O'Brien filled in for her. And Porter sang Rock of Ages, and there's supposed to be a beautiful high lead up there, you know. And I didn't hear it. I didn't know that Jennifer was there, and I got on to her about it when we got there. She said, you know, I've never heard that song in my life. I was raised as a Catholic, she said. I never heard that song in my entire life. I just turned around, bumped my head on the wall, and walked on back in the dressing room. Curly? To, to clarify why we didn't uh, do a high lead on that is Porter has come up with some gospel songs, an album of his, that he did with the Blackwood Brothers Quartet, and he wants the low male sounding type voicing. So we are using that, but he's said he got three Grammys for three of those gospel songs with the Oak, or with not the Oak Ridge Boys, with the Blackwood Brothers. And I used, yeah, I used your your tenor girl that you, you, that you used in your group for so long, and oh, she's she so did, good, she Jennifer O'Brien. Uh, but we just had to voice the way our, our boss on that show was well, I don't asking. know about y'all, but I can't imagine Carol Lee Cooper sounding like any of the Blackwood brothers. I don't like any of them. We can do it. You certainly don't favor any of them either. Thank you. You know, we all kind of associate our buddy Bill Carlisle with the funny songs and the, the no help wanted and the knot holes and things. But you wrote one of the great gospel songs, one of the great songs of... Uh, of inspiration, really, a song called Gone Home. Were you just in a serious mood one day, or do we just not know all the sides of Bill Carlisle? Well, I, I got the inspiration from uh, the death of my granddad, really, and I won't go into all of that, but uh, it, uh, it we, signifies the old home we lived in, the log cabin, and, and this uh, willow tree, weeping willow, was sitting by the door there. And it's per, uh, I uh, wrote it just because I... He, when he passed away, that I, it came to me that I should do that. And you know, at at my wife's funeral, the uh, Buck uh, over there and his daughters, Buck White, they sung that song, and along with Ricky, and they did a wonderful job. I wish that he would walk over behind me, and kind of give me a little support on it. They will, but yeah. they already have rehearsed it. You, that don't mean that you all don't join in on the chorus. We all everybody join in on the chorus. Bill, when you first wrote this, did you record this yourself? I never did record it, Bill, because uh, I just did so much better with the novelty stuff that uh, I would always let somebody else record the tune. Now, was it like Flat and Scruggs that had the big record they on had this? The, they had a big record on it. And, well, I tell you, the Grateful Dead's had the biggest one. The Grateful Dead. Really? I didn't it's know It's on the album. Right. And they... It's been a better money, bigger money maker. My goodness, with, I never knew they did it. Uh, well, I didn't either, and I didn't know who they were. But my, I asked my son. I got, I got the statement, and I said, "Bill, who, who is a grateful dad?" And he laughed. He said, "You'll find out when you get the check." And I said, oh. yeah. <laughs> That's right. And you know what? Strange thing, they're just like kin folks to me now. <laughs> I may send him another. <laughs> um, uh, this, I believe I said it'd be an F, and uh, if we make mistakes, we're going to go right on in the way because I was a mistake to start with. <laughs> Of the friends that I loved yesterday have gone they home. Have gone home. Gone they home. have gone home. They have gone home. The songbirds that sing in the dell seem to say they've gone. They have gone home. Gone they home. They have gone home. They've joined the heavenly fold. They're walking. 
walk in the streets of pure gold. They've left one by one as the work here was done. Gone home, gone home. Gone home. Here is lonely since they've gone before they've gone. They oh, have gone home. Gone they home. have gone home. The old weeping willow that stands by the door sadly sighs. Gone home. Gone they home. Have gone home. They've joined the heavenly fold. They're walking. The streets of the road They've left one by one As the work was done Gone home When the trumpet shall sound on that great judgment day, we'll go home, we will go home, go home, we will go home. to meet all our loved ones that have gone on that way. Go home, we have gone home, gone home. Thank you. Quiet. Bill, that's beautiful, buddy. That's a beautiful song. Boy, it's a beautiful song.